Yo, what is going on? It's the heaviest podcast, weekly worship at the altar of bloody radness. What is up, homies? <laughs> What's going on? Hello. What is happening? Oh, look, We're it's blessed. a Ross between two thorns. Yes, I've been working on that one all day. (laughs) Flying out the track. And no one else's. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we have got a guest. It's Ross. We've also got this extra guest here. This fucking massive spot on my nose. I've sworn too early. Sorry, I have to beat that one out. Absolutely enormous spot on my nose is also a guest. So there's four of us today. Shout out. It's a little little four way. Big ups. More the merrier, to start mate. becoming sentient. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since you've been on, Ross. When when was the last yeah. time you were on? Was it that mental Christmas episode where everything <laughs> went mental? Do you know what? Do you know what? I'm now trying to work out how many times I've actually been here, and I think just in keeping with the fact that there are four of us here, including Gary's spot, I think it is the fourth time I'm on here. <laughs> yeah, nice. I did. I think I did one with you guys like just years ago, just chatting shit. And then we did another one when we released Vespera or like about the time we released it. And then we did the shambolic Christmas episode, which was so <laughs> much fun. Like, I, was like, so I much still fun. talk about that. I still talk about that. <laughs> like, every time I see Harry and I see Jim, we like talk about it. And I'm like, we should, we should probably do that again. Like, it was, it was probably fun. the we worst audio again. experience for anybody ever, but it was a lot of fun to do. <laughs> we, it's we a shame we weren't doing video out. at that point. You need to redo it. Although, actually, now I'm thinking about it, maybe you shouldn't have done video. Can Jim be trusted one. on video? Can no, Jim definitely. Not be trusted on video. <laughs> yes. The grey shrew. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. He's gonna Bless love this. us. He's going to absolutely love this, isn't he? Yeah, he's going to so. bloody love it. I think I've got dog hair on my nice t shirt. Trying to get dog hair off of me. That's good podcasting. I might just be baby stuff. Yeah, he probably should have probably should have lint rolled before we started, mate. <laughs> I don't want a lint roller. Nah, have oh, you got nah, pets? I don't for us? I can deal with it. Nah, but I feel like I've got a lot of friends who do, and I usually end up covered in fucking cat hair or just my own hair. To be honest, I've usually usually. Can. <laughs> Russ, like Russ is out, one so. of the one of the hairiest people ever. Like <laughs> you have got it all over. <laughs> pretty. Sometimes you'll do a picture of you just riffing, and I'll be like, "God damn, <laughs> he's yeah. he's covered. He's like a gorilla." Holy shit. He Holy has shit, the Sasquatch got riffs. Yeah, it's like, I have here in places that people couldn't believe. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I guess now everybody knows that. Great. Yeah, now you've just confessed that to everyone. So, well, yeah. let, let now, the now they're going to be wondering what the spot no is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're all curious. <laughs> oh, I'm not at liberty to say that. <laughs> trying to think what... What's the spot that you would have? Well, I don't know. Like your gums, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> gums. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know. oh my god! I'm sorry. Like, I, actually, when when they took my wisdom teeth out, there was just hair underneath. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like rhino horns, are literally just like matted hair. Essentially, that's who your teeth are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to think the dentist would have told me that. Yeah, probably. But may, maybe not. Maybe like it would just freak him out. Because like they told me I still have a baby tooth. So like maybe there's something else in there. I don't know. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it's got one little baby tooth hanging out. Just one. Yeah, just dude, one hanging on. It's flat as fuck and it's still... I've realised now people can actually see this on video. But like, yeah, it's flat as fuck and it's like in here. So if you ever see a vet that looks a little bit flat when I'm talking, people will be like, oh, that is his baby tooth. Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to look you in the face ever again without just staring at I'm your just, baby there, tooth there's, now. This, there's, this freaky, there's that guy with that freaky little baby tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, oh, we, uh, it's been, yeah, like I say, it's been a long while since you came, since you came on, since... Um, since so, what's going on in with the with the God Eater camp? You guys have been playing quite a few shows recently, right? Uh, I feel like the opposite. Actually, <laughs> we've done like <laughs> we've done like we've we we had a really good like touring cycle out of Vespera. Like I, I know we spoke about it a bit last time I was on about how we we were obviously trying to do like a record and get it out when like half the band had left. Um, 
So even despite that, like we actually got a really good touring cycle out of it. Like I guess we got about a year, a year and a half. Um, Hell yeah! It's, it's out. It's been out two years on Saturday this week, and All Flesh Is Grass has been out five years on Friday, which is which is like that's weird. <laughs> that's that crazy. Like, like all, almost synced up to like the date, like a couple of years apart. Um, you can release another like, album on Saturday. No, I am. Um, I actually, I actually do have like just before I come on here, I have an email with a mix of some new stuff back. Um, Ooh, nice. Exciting. Yeah, um, we've been teasing it for a while. It's nearly done. Like it's recorded. It's. I'm kind of hoping this is like mix done. Um, we've yeah. had a few revisions of it. Like, obviously, anybody who's listening who's in a band or like has mixed or whatever knows there's a process with that so we're like nearly at the end of that starting to get to work on artwork videos all that fun stuff and i'm kind of hoping that something will be out by the end of the year um but still kind of just just trying to line everything up and you know what it's like now like you're trying to line it up with doing shows and anything like it all has to kind of sync up and you're kind of <laughs> yeah, now at yeah. the point where we're like oh that is what we need to do so it needs like, to feel like a campaign of sort of sorts yeah, yeah basically sure. um so yeah it's it's mostly like kind of singles i guess like that kind of growth development kind of style thing that we did a couple of years ago again um but like it's all new tunes and yeah i'm, I'm pretty happy with them like i think they're oh yeah i think they're pretty cool and like new vocalists in tow like jams obviously like an official member now um which is really sick um it's amazing really cool really cool to work with him on some new stuff and like i'm really like all the feedback we've had from the clips and the live shows has just been like that's a great addition so i'm hoping the recorded side like i think it matches it um so i'm hoping other people kind of take it that way and yeah it'll be out at some point amazing <laughs> <laughs> sick, there. i love mate. that yeah yeah, but like, also, if anybody follows me on Twitter, they see me having a meltdown about it every five minutes. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh, oh he's at again. I also see how you were saying about me posting like little clips of riffs. I think people think all of them are from this, and they're not. They're from like something like way in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so, be, so you're playing, so, I mean, you're like, playing 4D chess right now. Yeah, I'm always like, accidentally teasing stuff that's getting no hope of being out for another like two years at this point. <laughs> <laughs> still the mad scientist of riffs ross that's what i like to hear mate i'm oh, glad oh, i'm glad never, that it's still happening i've never stopped <laughs> <laughs> glad you're writing an album you're you're writing an album three albums ahead when you still haven't got the, the one out you've got to release a single from this one first before you start writing the one after it and the one after that you know uh, that right <laughs> yeah but uh also i'm like halfway through writing an album so i didn't say Hell that yeah. but yeah it's like halfway halfway done halfway written it's cool amazing man sick news so, how, are you, how are you guys though i feel like i just waffled there for ages how are you well no nah, it's great son's a father so you know that's pretty cool fucking wild <laughs> i've been dadding <laughs> out man it's come it's like it's just it's so quick it's just happened like it feels like it was about 20 minutes ago that i was like jolene's gonna have a baby and now it's now it's six weeks old <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's uh it's been fantastic mate it's it's been an absolutely lovely brilliant weird scary amazing time perfect god <laughs> god well, damn it yeah, great. what great we always have the most heinous technical difficulties it's almost exclusively when we have somebody else on like every time yeah, every it's other the, time it's, it's, we have a lot of chill nah, but that, yeah, but no, but that's, third party in. but that's how it is like our, our rig for like playing shows is the same like i set it up in the house it works it works f like flawlessly i have no issues i plug it in i turn it on i plug my in-ears in and it's fine <laughs> And then we go to the practice room and somebody's like, oh, this isn't working. And I'm like, well, it was, it was fucking working two days ago. Yeah. So <laughs> Why does you technology have, have performance anxiety? That is a question that we must find the answer out to. Look, the laptop is over in my bed. It's chilling out. It's had a hard, it's had a hard couple of years. It's allowed its rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you look after it so well, I'm sure. I do, but it's so um, dented and covered in 
stickers and all sorts. <laughs> yeah, use the stickers. That's what breaks them. That's it. Never put stickers on your laptop. They're not designed for it. No, they can't handle got, it. You've got to include really hard bands on it. Absolutely. How's people going to know you're cool if you don't have stickers on your laptop? This is a real conundrum that you've to, uncovered to here. On, to be honest, I used to, I, like, in, my, in one of my jobs, like, I just use a work computer and, like, that's it. I don't need, like, a laptop or anything. But I had the laptop sitting on the desk because I was about to go for my lunch. And <laughs> this, like, woman came up and she was, like, clearly looking at it. And it's got, like, at the time I didn't really have many stickers on it, but it had a huge, like, malevolence one. <laughs> and she was, like, malevolence like, <laughs> what's that and i i apparently turned around and just went oh it's like the hardest band in europe and just didn't say anything else. <laughs> <laughs> and she shot me this like really like just really like awkward look and i was like i've gone too far uh, <laughs> i've gone too far this time imagine having to explain malevolence to a normie blimey that'd be exhausting wouldn't it <laughs> oh, when uh God. when jolene first saw that the name written down she was like you're listening to a band called Male Violence. Male <laughs> that's, that's violence. pretty sick. <laughs> they had a t-shirt. They had a t-shirt like that, I'm sure, years ago that was just Male Violence. <laughs> <laughs> since then, Hell I'm like, yeah. I can't not read it. Like, ah, yes, mal- Male Violence or less, ah, yes, Malevial Islands. <laughs> like, I can't read it properly. <laughs> oh, dear me. Oh, dear me. Um, Ross, we asked you on the show because there's some really really lovely riffs coming out um we we sent you over a little package got you to do your own work um i did and i had to do homework in about 20 years so that was (laughs) (laughs) it's nice it's chucking yourself like locking yourself away yeah oh yeah it's better than uh (laughs) Stop. Long division or whatever it is you are, you used to have to do with it, but well, I yeah, appreciate um, that you used the technical term for it, and I just went sums. Sums. <laughs> 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 well, it took me a sec. I've got a maths degree. And it took me a minute to think of the name of long division. So that says a lot about the uh, education system in this country. But anyway, um, <laughs> we brought you in in your professional capacity as a as a death metal legend to uh, to help us discuss the new Black Dahlia Murder album. So obviously, if you don't know, the Black Dahlia Murder are a five-piece death metal band from Michigan, and their new album is called Servitude. It's released on Friday the 27th of September through Metal Blade. So this is, you know, a very pivotal and significant album for the Black Dahlia Murder, obviously. It's their 10th album, but it's their first album since the uh, the passing of the death metal talisman that is Trevor Sternat. Is it their 10th album? It's their 10th okay. album. I went through and I counted wow. them to make sh- to double it, double check. I went through Spotify and counted them. It's their 10th album. And yeah, that That is actually, like, even in itself, that is mental to me to think that how yeah. they have been a band. Like, because I think people do the kind of like, oh, they were a sort of like at the gates sort of knockoff or like whatever in their early days. But see, when you actually start looking at the dates, I'm like, they were even closer to that than like anybody yeah. I think actually tries <laughs> yeah, to they were, they were. They, they were, were surprisingly like, close to that whole scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they've just continued like doing their own. Yeah, when a band loses their singer, especially in such tragic circumstances, I think mean, it can be really hard for the kind of for them to kind of find a way to to pick up and continue. Like often, a lot of bands they would just kind of they would stop, but or they would take a much longer break between finishing, like before between it happening and sort of reassembling and kind of regrouping. But what you've got to remember about the Black Dahlia murder is Trevor was like one of the most like the proponents of new bands and he absolutely adored his fan base as well. So I think it's, it's right for them to, you know, I think it's been like four years since the last record. So I think it's right that they just, you know, they just keep it going. And you've had Brian on guitar shift to lead vocals. And then I think a guitarist from previous iterations of the, of the band has come in. And Brian was one of the founding members of the band. And I think like, it's definitely the right move for them to just kind of keep it going and just keep bringing joy and, and fun to their fan base, which I think is what Trevor definitely would have wanted. Like, I think definitely that's like, I think that was one of the most important things to him. I don't want to, obviously I don't want to, I didn't know him personally or anything, but just from the (laughs) vibes you get from his sort of online presence and any interviews or anything you ever see from him, like community and the kind of the death metal community was so important to him and the black dahlia murder are one of the most important bands in that community so i think we'd all it would be a real shame if 
Trevor's passing meant that we lost the, the entire band. So I'm really, really, before we even actually talk about this album, just the fact that it exists is absolutely wicked. Like it makes yeah. me, it just brings me joy. Just the fact that this album has has been put into into being. It's just nice. It's really nice that they can continue and that they can continue in such yeah. a successful way. Like this isn't um, really, this just needs to have been an album for me to That's be happy exactly with it. it, isn't it? Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like sure. this needs to have just exist and I'll go great. This is, this is, uh, you know, this means that they can keep going, keep making money, keep like, you know, their, uh, their lives don't have to be completely uprooted and like, you know, exactly, yeah. kind of like drop out and be an Uber Eats driver. <laughs> you know, they can <laughs> yeah, still yeah. live the death battle dream and they deserve it. Like they're, they're huge, huge, huge parts of like, of heavy music culturally. Like, you know, they've, they've existed and been a reference point for death battle as I know it f- since for as long as I knew what death battle was. Like I remember like okay. listening yep. to like unhallowed for the first time when I was like learning yep. what metal was. And yep. like, so <laughs> I'm so stoked for them to be able to continue. Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of was a bit like, you know, normally when something like this happens in a band, you're like, that's it. It's, it's kind of game over. Like, there's no coming back from that. I just, I don't really think that happened with them for me. Like, I was a bit like, I don't know how they're, they'll do it. But like, if you're a fan of the band, like, you know what they are like. And if you've watched the documentaries and stuff, like, they're just not a band that's going to stop. Like, they talk about it and I think it's like, um, it's the first documentary they did, the Majesty one. Oh, mate, that about- is... It's that so is like sick. that DVD is like pivotal in my like growing up. Like that used to be something we would like smoke and watch like I endlessly. Watch it, it was like I w- <laughs> we would watch that like the way that you'd watch like CKY videos yeah. and stuff like that. You know, yeah, like yeah. it's just it was just it was like it was like a, a comedy album or something like it's that. So, really, like, it was just so like funny. that was so funny. But they they talk about it at one point about like, and I mean that came out like not long after they'd done Nocturnal. So I guess they'd kind of like, as it were at that point, they'd kind of leveled up and become like a career sort of, on the verge of being a career kind of band and like actually doing it full time. And they say something in it like, they're watching it become the machine that they've always sort of wanted it to become, like progressing to that point. And I'm like, they spoke about it at that point and they've just kept going and going and going and getting arguably better and better and better and yeah people have left people have come back in like whatever but they're just a band that i'm like they were never gonna stop and yeah it's like a total fucking bust that unfortunately trevor had died but like i don't think there was any real doubt that they were gonna continue in some way um and then yeah again like bringing like an older member back in someone like ryan knight i'm like they the doors that even opens, I think like, I've written a little bit about it on like some notes, but like even the doors that open sound wise, I think it's just it has actually kept the band evolving again. And it's really cool to hear for me personally that like I think they could have done just a bit of a oh, it's kind of verminous like two point oh or like, yeah, we kinda just it. did the Black Dahlia murder as it is like but they've actually in somehow going through all of this, they have still kept evolving the band. This like, is it's the thing, crazy to hear. This is like one, they're always touted as one of the bands who are like the most consistent band ever. Like there's that conversation. It's always like before when they still existed every time I die and like the Black Dahlia murder, just bands who are just consistently brilliant. You know, they don't, they, they don't mess with the, the main formula too often, but everything that they put out is as good as, as everything else. But it really does feel like actually there's a, a proper, like a bit of a shift on this record, like that sort of additional technical flourish and that additional, like grand i mean the grandiosity was kind of something that was brought in on nightbringers and it definitely really works and it made they made everything a bit more dramatic but it feels like that kind of anthemic quality and this album honestly i've, I've written in my notes it's it's almost like playful like it's quite it's got yeah. a lot of fun to it and i think that's something that is obviously the band are like yeah we went through some real tragedy but actually we love death metal it's like the most fun thing that we can do with our time and we want to bring that to to the listener and i i just i love it i think it's absolutely incredible this record it's so Again, cool. i think that's something that they've always had like 
like you start reading the lyrics and you're like, oh, yeah, fuck, yeah. oh, fuck, that's okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like, and I, I actually, I know a lot of people rave about Trevor and his writing and his lyrics, but I, act, I actually don't think a lot of people really quite go that deep into it. There's mm-hmm. some dark, 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 miserable stuff in there. And it's incredible. It's like a fascinating like read and a fascinating listen. But they were always still just a fun band. And like, I, I kind of do as well. Like, I listen to this and I go, like, yeah, there's some... I don't know, I haven't actually read the lyrics yet. But like, musically, like, there's a couple of tracks on there. I'm like, yeah, that's that's fun music. Yeah, like, that's good. I'll turn that off. Even some of the, like, the slower songs... I'm like that's a that's a fun fucking song. Like that'll be a fun song to hear at a show, and you know everybody's gonna just be bouncing up and down. Yeah, like, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's really it is really cool. Like I definitely took that away from it as well. I think um, first thing that jumps out is that the vocal performance it needs it really like deserves all the props for like yeah you know this is his first record like being a death metal vocalist and he sounds fantastic like it, it doesn't sound like somebody just having a go like it sounds <laughs> like know. he's been doing it for a while obviously he's like shared the stage with trevor forever so he's probably been like screaming next to him <laughs> like on or off mic whatever it was because like, yeah. he's been doing backing vocals for forever right um but like taking on that duty taking on um the sort of like lyrical flow that Trevor would have and the way of sort of moving between high and low notes and the sort of enunciation that he used to have. Like it's just all bled into his psyche and and like what is delivered on this record. It sounds fantastic. It's the machine gun delivery, isn't it? Like that take, like if you're not like a very well seasoned vocalist, taking that approach is pretty scary, especially if you've got to go away and and tour it live. So like, it, uh, but I, I've not seen him, but I have seen videos, and he can absolutely make it work it's, and absolutely it's put funny, it off. It's funny you do mention that because I, I, I've like watched like videos since they started performing like this, and I was a bit like, I mean, it's good, but like, I think obviously you transition from being a guitar player doing, yeah, he's doing back, backing vocals, he's doing a bit of patter with the crowd, like blah blah blah, but like to transition not just to being the full-time vocalist but to being the full-time like focal point the front yeah the front man, person yeah. of the band like i was about like okay like yeah that with respect like that that's not easy like that does need work there there is time needed to step into that and evolve into it and come into his own but i watched a festival stream of them a couple of weeks ago and i was just like this is the best it's ever been it, like I, I honestly i don't know what one it was but i was just like oh it's clicked and like the fact that it's not trevor doesn't actually really matter he's done his it's got all those elements but he's just doing his own thing and it's just it it just and musically as well like i don't even know what they've done in that department i don't know if they're playing to a click now i assume they probably are and they maybe haven't before they're like i feel like they're one of those last bands to make that switch and right. what, whatever has happened, like it's all just tightened up, and I'm like, oh, okay, like this is gonna be fine. <laughs> like, That's really it was cool crazy. To hear. Yeah, it was yeah. crazy, and like I'm, I don't know if they've announced anything coming back to the UK, but like I'm absolutely buying a ticket when it comes. Oh, around. for sure. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, there. I mean, they did like, download, didn't they? But I think that was all that they did in the UK. Yeah, it was like da- like loads of bands who did download this year, then did like Ireland. And then back into Europe, and like nobody really did the UK. I think no, it was rubbish. maybe it's like a, a contractual thing that you're not allowed to. I don't know. I don't know how it works. I, I, I mean, I, I so. yeah, I, I don't know any intricacies of it or whatever. But like, yeah, sometimes that is the case. Especially, I would think now for bands that are maybe a bit more like, I don't really want to use the word legacy, but like that is kind of what they are now. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, that's not cool. a dirty word when it comes to them. I think they've they've earned the title of a legacy band. Absolutely. And still and still churning out screamers somehow. <laughs> like, so, like so few are still doing that, really. <laughs> Do you know what? The first time I listened to this record, I was listening to it in my car and I enjoyed it, but I really didn't think it was I didn't I didn't really like the sound of it very much. I thought it was a bit muddy. Um failed the car test, tragic. 
<laughs> I do, I do, yeah, I know. So there's two tests, and it's it's headphone test and car test, and they're the only tests that matter. Um, and I didn't. I was like, oh, like listen to the track Mammoth uh, something. Mammoth <laughs> it's, it's Mammoth Hand. Me. I was like, there's a load of like really cool parts here that aren't really necessarily shining through. And then it's way better in the context of the record. It's, um, cool. Yeah, it's well, cool as a single, but see when I heard it in the record. I think it's is it the second last track? When it got uh, to there on the record, I was like, Oh. oh I, I enjoyed it, it much more on the second time through. I, I listened to it in headphones and I, the album came alive a little bit more, I think. Like I it was I was way, way happier with just like the mix of everything and how all like the ideas were sitting with each other. I just yeah, I thought it was really muddy at first and I was like, oh fuck. I think like I was like, "What's going on?" But nah, I'm I'm in. I love it. Um, I think the the track "Cursed Creator," right? That track stands out massively to me, dude. I love it. It's it's quite different, dude. It's quite sort of it's more of like a groove focused track. Yeah. Like yeah. it's it's really interesting. It kind of like starts like a Lamb of God track or something, and then <laughs> yeah, there's a lot like, of that going on. It's, in there. Sure, it's so, real groovy, dude. I love there's it. A, there's a friend of mine um, who used to play in Sectioned. Do you remember those guys? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they they're old vocalists. Um, and we've always had this thing of like the Black Dahlia Jamie. murder are like no no Murray like before, oh okay before that um, broken ankle Murray shout out <laughs> <laughs> um, but we've always had this thing that like the Black Dahlia murder are like one of the best like death metal bands going but it's the weird tracks that really like once you get past everything it's the weird tracks it's like the yeah. last track on Nocturnal Warborn. That is an understated heater, and it's just like a metal song. It's slow. It's so groovy, and like yeah. that is one of their best tracks. And just see when they lean into something like that and really just go for it. I absolutely agree with you. I'm it, just I can't. There's the, the... It just pops above even the more like tech death stuff or the melodic stuff they do that I love, and it would I would say is probably my favorite in their style. But yeah. sometimes they just do something either just a straight ass beat or metal song or like one of the weird grind ones and i'm like that's so cool like i was just looking up it's the it's the thing this the song that made me love this band was the horror cosmic on unhallowed which is exactly that it's the it's the slow dirgy like, it's completely different to everything else that's on that record and it's just kind of the moment when you're like oh like it kind of wakes you up and you're right that is absolutely what's going on here with this with this one too on servitude like it's like is it on on seas of salted blood there's a song called that and it's on like i think it's on ritual maybe and it's another one like it's such a slow like groovy swimmy track and it's just amazing like it's great so like i'm yeah, so glad they're still doing that as well um it's cool to see i guess plus all the other whatever's going on <laughs> <laughs> It's all the shredding. That's like all the like the really sassy, like it's some the sort of like in the t- it's the oh, vibrato. Mate, in like, and they, it's and some... they both have the same vibrato. So I'm like, you can't even tell like who's who at a point. And oh, they it's... just come together in the middle. And I'm like, I've wanted this for years. Like this you, is it always what I've been gets like for. Iron Maiden <laughs> levels of like dual leading, doesn't it? And like there's moments in Utopia Black where it sounds like sounds like the movie Crossroads with like bloody what's his name? Steve Fye and stuff like that. It's so it's like insane it's so... film. Oh like, man, that's an see, awesome. Movie. See yeah, the bit awesome where movie. he's wailing at the end and he's literally ripping shred licks to say thank you very much. It's one of the best <laughs> things I've ever seen. Yeah. It's a classic. I love um, it. Seen it for ages. I need to re- give it a rewatch. Just the battle yeah, scene, this... not the whole film. The battle scene is. Uh, I just just picked that out on YouTube. That'll do me, wouldn't it? The battle. It's that there. Is, that is all a classic. That is a classic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. This just oh, it's just full of it. Like the mammoth's hand, like you're saying, it's just gorgeous. Those like sweeping romantic guitar solos that go on in that song. Like you just just warms your heart. Like this album is so joyful and just makes you feel warm and fuzzy and i love that and like it'd be so easy for them to like really lean into you know the sadness and you know they've they've lost one of their no you know their front man but also probably their best friend and like it'd be so easy for it to really just focus in on on that the sadness and the loss but no they've just gone for the complete opposite side of the coin and just released this really joyful triumphant record 
Yeah, consider the circumstances is incredibly bright, isn't it? It's <laughs> like it's fantastic. Yeah. Right. So bright that uh mate, the transcosmic blueprint, that track goes into like a mad like prog solo section. It's unreal, <laughs> dude. It absolutely rips. I was some, I yeah, was dude. walking really, Max like, and Doug. <laughs> like there's some really cool points like that and like in the first track as well, there's a really weird like sort of not quite a key change but like the way they do it and i'm like this is in like prog territory like the, like the way job for a cowboy do it it's and a I'm rush like, business I'm, yeah. like, we're, I'm like we are so back <laughs> awesome absolutely brilliant mate such a good record such a i mean like like you said son like they could it could have literally just been any record and i think it be <laughs> could have been a it. record it just could like, have, been a, it just been like a played white cover or something yeah. like one, one of the records of all time yeah exactly. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is it's absolutely fantastic and i think it's just a, a brilliant sign that the black dahlia murder aren't showing any signs of uh of, of losing any sort of steam as a result of the tragic loss that they suffered and that album is sick. It's called Servitude. It's by the Black Dahlia Murder. It comes out on Friday. Make sure you check it out. I'm sure that they that you all will because you're all very smart, smart people. <laughs> Thank you for the break. riffs. Thank you for the yeah. Nobody but nobody but 150 IQ geniuses listen to our podcast. So you know, <laughs> I've, got, I've, got that on, I've got that on good authority. <laughs> that's why the that's why the listening numbers are so small because it's very elite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the um, <laughs> just just the important ones yeah let's uh let's, let's talk we've got another you know not unsubstantial record beer released this week although like ross we were chatting about before we hit record like it's a tough week to release an album up against a black dahlia murder but the um uk hardcore band harriet are releasing their first record their first full length it's called devoured by the mouth of hell and it's released on Friday the 27th through Century Media Records. So I feel like it's kind of mad to say that this is a debut album because it feels like they've been kind of omnipresent for the last few years. They've been on loads of big support bills, playing big festivals. Uh, they'd be doing that that deal, that Jackson advert and doing guest so vocals sick. on the end album. Yeah, that Jackson advert was really, really cool. Like and the whole the whole at, thing. Like The whole thing was, yeah, the whole great. video is amazing. Yeah. It's really awesome. Uh, they've had big features in like Kerrang. You know, they've just, the industry, it feels to me like the industry at large really, really wants this band to do well, right? They really, really want Harriet to be a success. And historically, when a band is pushed this hard by the, the industry at large, my my cynical bone starts going, doo -doo -doo, you know what I mean? Like, just think about like King 810 when they first came around, they were absolutely sick, but people were trying so hard to make them a thing that everyone just kind of went the other way and it didn't really work. And there's, you know, there's loads of examples of stuff like that that's happened over the years, but it does, I don't know, it just makes you inherently skeptical of hype, right? And mm -hmm. I can't, I'm not on my own, like, I know. You oh, 100%. It's hard to ignore, like, the press that you do see of them being like like the saviors of british heavy music like there's all like there's this sort of like hyperbole around them and yeah. it's uh it's set quite a precedent whether that whether they wanted it or not yeah absolutely and if you read the press release for the record that's something that the band are very very key, uh, acutely aware of and they understand that there's a real pressure on them to put something out that's that's going to move the needle because of how much like hype and how much exposure they've got and also on top of that, when you look at the kind of the the credits for this record, you've got it's been recorded by Josh Middleton from Silosis. It's also had oh. drum engineering and recording done by Justin Hill, who was a it was a, one of the singers of Sixth, but he's also you know a very a, a, like, respected. He's got some crazy records under his yeah. belt. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, and and to go from doing like extreme metal to kind of a lot of the more sort of like poppy or not poppy, but like kind of. Holding absence, dreams, yeah, that state, kind like, of end, yeah, caskets, yeah. like he's he does more of that and like songwriting now, I guess. So it's kind of sick. It's sick to hear him actually back doing a yeah, man, for sure. And then record, and then also on top of that, it's had the old spit and polish, the mix and master job by the goat Will Putney. Like 
you know, you hang around me and Sonny for five minutes, and I'm sure you'll hear us mention Will Putney. We love that guy. <laughs> His bands are brilliant. The records he works on are brilliant. Man, so there's a lot of a like... real step up as well. Like there was a while I think everybody was kind of like, oh, Will Putney, like the goat, and I was a bit like, yeah, it's sick, but like I don't know, it's not really for me. And then some point about two or three years ago he le- like every few years he kind of like levels up a little bit again every and new he- fit for an autopsy album yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically. <laughs> that's it that's yeah, it, basically. That's it. <laughs> and, and like he did they did the new fit record the new thy art record and the new end record and i was like that is a holy trick and the new counterparts one as well yeah and whatever he was doing at that point i was just like oh this is good now this is like, and not just like good. This is like really good. Like I want to sound like this now. Good now, come on now, Ross. Come on now, mate. I know what you mean though. Like there was a period of time where you know he just made every record sound amazing, but it was all kind of the same thing. Whereas now he's like, he ha- he definitely feels like he works in a more nuanced fashion, band to band. Like rather than going, well, that just that's a Will Putney sounding record. To so, like working with the band and making them well, sound well, like think, the best version of them. I think he's got more people working in the studio now who kind of do their own records like they kind of have a bit of a vibe that he has but they they kind of do their own records because he he does like managing bands and stuff now like he manages that um great american ghost and he like produces Uh, them i didn't know that they're new they're amazing all bang like yeah they are sick uh, they are very sick yeah that's a sick one he's working on i'm sure yeah for sure um but yeah so he's he's done the mix and the master on this record so you know there's been some there's been some moolah spent on this record right there's there's you know the people are behind it so the question really is the, the all important question is is it any good where do you where do you boys stand on this record is it any I, good sonny i'm gonna let you go first mate come on i'm in so like basically yeah there's a huge amount of sort of hyperbole around this band right and what they're going to do and who they're going to be in the scene and so that definitely put a lot of pressure and it kind of had me thinking like oh i wonder what's going to be on the record like is there going to be this is there going to be that um and when you look at actually what happens on the record it's the ideas that we've already heard from the band it's this it's these really cool ethereal textures it's this real sort of brilliant fusion of like death metal and hardcore that we all love and then like industrial tones it's like these sort of three ideas coming together and i think it's really it's actually quite nice that i've not uh, the what i'm hearing on this record is really them sort of like working really well inside that space that they've already um created it's they've they're i think they're refining their sound at this Absolutely, point they're not yeah there hasn't been an evolution and nobody should be expecting that from them because we've got like for all the hype that this band has got this is still their first like debut album right so no they're matter very what, young like, as well they're very like a very young band and what we've got is a really cool really heavy album that sticks within its like lane given like its lane is cool as fucking and it's established like i said like ethereal industrial hard as fuck like sort of three really cool ideas coming together and you just get loads of different variations of those ideas within this yeah. record like and i really like that i think i like that they've stuck to their gens and they're just like forging what they are still and like putting that on display um like yeah and that was that's some real treat um because realistically like last week before we'd heard this record and given like the type of band they are the type of bands they play with like i i can't believe that there wasn't like that I wasn't going to be saying to you next week, oh, how cool was that black metal bit? Like, right? (laughs) That's not there. And that's like an easy card for bands like this to play. It's creeping into all the things we like. And yeah, I like that they're just, they're playing with their own toys, dude. And it sounds, it sounds like a million fucking bucks. Oh my God. Like you can hear every single, every penny of it. It sounds so, it's so loud. It's it's like, I've, Every other album I listen to, this is like complete shinfo, but every other album I listen to, I listen to it like 50, 50 volume on my laptop. This one has to go down to 20 because it's so bloody loud. Like <laughs> when they get into those chunks and you get that, um, like that, the, that like sort of underlying kind of feedbacky, almost like ring out on all of the chunky, like muted chords, it just makes it all feel so aggressive and so like thick. 
But like, I totally agree with everything that you're saying about how, like, because you know, when we talked about uh, profound morality, the EP, we basically were saying like, this EP is a collage. It's a it's a mood board. Yes. And every element that is on it is wicked, but none of them go together yet. And they haven't figured out how to turn it into songs. And what it really does feel like, this album, they've started to work out how to make all of their ideas work as as songs. Like they're not quite there yet because they have Yeah. There's a few moments where they've had to kind of isolate the ethereal Chelsea Wolfie Emma Ruth Rundle kind of thing and stand it on its own because they can't always figure out how that goes into the context of the heavy stuff but that's something that's that i think really that's probably a con a confidence thing i i really think that they've found the really sick blend between you know yeah the, the hard the hm2 the new metal bounce the industrial vibe you know the thick chunky riffs like they've they've really got all of the aspects of what makes them heavy bang on and then also the standalone tracks like uh, Opaline and uh, oh, what's yeah. the other one called? They're absolutely fantastic, aren't Gorgeous. they? Gorgeous. Um, what is uh, Lashed? Is it Lashed? Lashed is the one that's quite yeah. um, industrial as well. They're absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous songs. They could be like cuts from, you know, like the Ow and Emma Ruth Rundle album that came out a couple of years ago that we really loved. They're absolutely... But I just... All I want to do is, in the next album, I just want him to blend all of it together and then just make songs where it all blends all into one. But this is kind of a step on the journey, and I think this album yes. is really, really, really strong first record for a band. I think that's like that's kind of what I found with it. Um, like, there's a lot of sick moments. Like, like you're saying, it sounds amazing like the production team on it like yes yeah, the fact the fact that it's so like disgusting but also clear is really cool i think yes. i think they could have very easily gone down the the sort of like woolly or oh, we're using the the woolly hm2 sound like i think the fact that it is actually so it has that but it's so like sharp on the edges is really cool and like i'm really glad they've done that um but yeah, I'm I'm kind of like the same. Like it's it's there's a lot of cool ideas on display. There's a lot of cool moments, but some of it just doesn't quite like meet in the middle. And the things yeah. I enjoy most about it actually aren't the heavy bits. It's the weird stuff. It's the industrial stuff. It's the chip, the sort of those spooky like clean vocals. Like I think that stuff is that's what yeah. I'm, that is that actually is, at the end of the day that is actually what i want to hear more of that and is I really just, strong you're right and and, that's and they, kind of they their are usp getting, as a band as well isn't it yeah but I, again i don't really know how much it's shouted about because i feel like whenever i talk to anybody about them people are like oh harriet like they're the heaviest thing going and i'm like yeah but they also do this really cool like other stuff that i really like <laughs> <laughs> actually but i i again I, I agree i think i think they've actually as a band like because because they've they've been a band for like quite a long time now i think te mm -hmm. technically speaking i don't know i don't know what the official date on their bio or whatever says but like i think they've te technically been a band for like quite a long time now and a lot of it is just evolution and mm -hmm. the the first couple of singles they did with with deb and the band the e the ep um, last year or the year before the album like they're clearly refining and getting better and better and better and just developing in that sense and i and i'm keen to hear where they kind of go from that because again i think i think there's actually so much room to sort of blend all of those sounds and just yeah, meet in definitely. the middle somewhere and just have like have a, an even cooler band really at the end of the day and um, the only thing that i can think is maybe that does cause problems in terms of who they can maybe potentially tour with or not like I, I don't know that's just maybe I don't where, know. You get good I enough kind of... and, and it's more a case of who can we get to tour with you so yeah i don't think, i don't think that's something you, that they should worry about too I, much i don't think it's something they should worry about at all because they're clearly like yeah. they're, they're on doing the, something right they? they're doing something right they're on the yeah. up like some of the stuff they've had in even the past few years has just been so cool to see like and then yeah, that tour they're doing later in the year. It's like what is it? Silosis fit, fit for an autopsy. Darkest tour, yeah. hour, darkest very hour cool. as well. I'm like I'm <laughs> sick of it. That's so sick. <laughs> We're going to the Bristol date. I can't wait. It's going to be uh, amazing. I'll I'll definitely go to Glasgow. I'm, yeah. I'm stoked on the Glasgow date. It's in a venue with an upstairs that has seats in it. 
Oh, oh, yes. Get yourself comfortable, mate. Absolutely yeah. sick. Love that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm I just think I'm like gonna watch four sick bands with a little seat. It's gonna be. And have a little seat. Maybe there's nobody in the, in the one in front. You can put your feet up. Live the dream. Oh, I, I just. May, think, like... I may even queue early. <laughs> Gotta get that <laughs> balcony seat, bro. You know it. Spot. I respect you very much, Ross. Uh, what I was gonna say is, I'm just glad that like it's this album is real, real heavy. If they're they're being positioned as like mm-hmm. poster boys you know sorry to gender that term but you know what i mean like they're being positioned as like poster people for the future of like metal and they're proper heavy and i think that's really good that if this is like a band that inspires a young generation to get get, to buy guitars and to buy well you can't buy you probably can't afford to buy an actual hn2 pedal but you can buy something that that emulates it you can buy a 20 dollar plug-in from audiority there you go. It's, There's 20, hack. It's, it's 20 euros or 20 dollars or whatever it is. It's a plug in. You can run it. It sounds exactly like one. And I just printed a load of stems for our new stuff with it. So it, ab- <laughs> it, ab- <laughs> it absolutely like does the job. You weren't expecting <laughs> to get those hacks in there, were you? Well, there you go. Of course. For that. I just appreciate there's... that, mate. There's a lot more fun than just having the pedal. So. <laughs> but yeah, like, it's just glad it's, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of these like, hyper pop with guitars bands that keep popping up you know they're being inspired by broom and horizon fair enough but i'm glad that like there's also a generation who want to be like filthy heavy nasty's and... back dude yeah man and and i'm glad of it i'm really glad of it like digging into sort of a few tracks and stuff like the first uh, opening one two punch of like foul void into harm sequence both absolutely savage tunes like i think there's there's a like a mosh call in foul void where I, it sounds like the lyrics are god is your father's dad which i thought was a bit odd like <laughs> god god's your granddad apparently no i don't I have no idea what the words actually were but that was what i heard and i found it hilarious to myself um i, I love mean, when goes, just that now. And she does that like sort of flip over weird scream yeah. like it's so cool her vocal performance is absolutely sick on this. These sort of like the twists that you get, like where it just sort of, it's like a high and then it goes even higher or it goes into a low. It's like, they're really, really, really yeah, sick. Mate. And then also like her with, I think it's Jake, isn't it? He plays bass. Like his voice is so much lower. Like that, that dichotomy of their styles works so well. And it's a really, a really good juxtaposition, which they use really well when they go in heavy, like, siege lord really cool julian on the drums sounding absolutely wicked all over that track like a lot of sort of rhythmic shifts i really like the way that julian plays drums it's like it's not overly showy or technical it's just loaded with like flair and charisma which i think is really awesome you don't hear you know in sort of the youtube drummer generation you mainly hear people just trying to have as many chops as possible and he's just more about like just kind of feeling it out and i think that's really important um yeah, he's, yeah he's, he's great on this, actually. Like, to be honest, is one of the things I did, like, really actually at the end of it, I was like, oh, the, the, the foundation with the drums is great. Like, yeah. it, and because it's so clear, like, the guitars are so clear, the drums are so clear as well. And again, I think they could have just sort of crushed them to oblivion and. <laughs> yeah. Compressed uh, the hell out of them. And, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. it is, but, like, I feel like every hit, like, pops like it it's a really great like it's a great performance from Definitely. from him i think um it's probably one of the things i actually do, uh, like i say i'm sitting here like yeah that was that was cool that was good good a plus a plus for me yeah. <laughs> that's one of the sick things about this record like it sort of keeps to its own tempo it's not con- it's not like concerned with like racing and blasting and doing sort of everything which like some bands do like you could have like realistically i I thought i was going to be coming away from this being like oh this is like a okay nearly end album that's kind of what i thought (laughs) it was going to end up like i just did and it's not it's it keeps to its own sort of really cool sluggish hefty self and it just maintains this brilliant brilliant heavy atmosphere and yeah, you you put in all the additional textures and stuff, and it's it's fantastic. Like that that track lash that feels like a fucking drug haze. It's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a really cool. Like it's got a bit of I don't know. It's, a, it's got a bit of a 
gothy thump to it which works really well like it's got like that almost like that perturbator like what's the uh, is it new order that or new model new model the ep did which is like really hard like blade club scene kind of vibes and like i think yeah, that works healthy. really well yeah very health yeah very health like style i think that really works um and debbie sounds really good on the top of it as well and yeah like visage is really cool it's got that like really giving me that thou and emma roof rundle vibes like more i think might even be my favorite track on the record like that one really really bangs like that that final breakdown's proper art like i'm really into it like i think this is a this is a very strong a very strong opening album and i think it's a good you know it's a good they're a good band to push forward as like the uk's kind of young heavy like you know like when you see like the callous style boys being pushed around quite a lot as like the american you know next big young heavy band like i think herit as our kind of counterpoint to that is a is a, are a good band to have for sure the, the other Definitely. thing i think to maybe point out is seeing about the the fact that as an album this is a kind of like it is a starting point like it is a debut but it yeah. feels like there's places they can go with it yeah, definitely. and I'm finding, yeah. and I'm finding. So yeah, they're not much, tapped out for sure. No, and I'm finding so much now that bands are bringing out a debut, and it's so produced and so developed that I'm like, the only way you can actually really go is to either kind of do the same but not as good, or down. Yeah, like, and there's, and there's, <laughs> that's very true. That's and there's, very true. And there's actually no room for progression based on how much people have pushed it. Whereas with Harriet, I'm like, yeah, people are pushing this and like really are behind it, but like, I think they're pushing them to get to, to go further to do more and i think it does serve as like a good jumping off point for that which a debut record should do like i i'm I definitely yeah like, it's what it should do we, i mean we're we're unfortunately all old enough to remember the like <laughs> the debut the the se- the sequel the the third album the fourth album that just get better and better better like the run whereas now i'm like i just don't feel like i'm really seeing that as much from younger bands it's like one and done basically yeah bands keep imploding and yeah yeah it, not even just imploding but like the second record is just a not very good version of the first one the third one is a <laughs> not very good version of the second one like it's just a downward <laughs> spiral whereas like yeah. i don't know maybe maybe now we're hopefully seeing a bit of a shift back into that that growth because ultimately at the end of the day your first record should not be your best record it should it you've had your whole life 100%. to write it but like <laughs> it kind of absolutely in pure technical like practice hours should not be your best record yeah <laughs> like you can only so true. you theoretically should only be able to get better from the first one because you've done it and then you build on it so i'm i'm kind of hoping that's that's maybe a sign of change in that sort of mentality as well. Like I would be, I would be personally really stoked to see that, that way of thinking, that way of progression, like make a comeback. Um, I think it's been, I don't think it's not existed because obviously like bands like Black Dahlia Murder, like we're saying are 10 albums deep and still releasing bangers and some of their like coolest work. But I feel like in newer bands, it's just not happening as much. So it might be nice, you know, to, to see a bit of a shift. And that. Yeah, and if and if this is the record to maybe make that shift for people, then fuck yeah, I'm, absolutely, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> for sure, for sure, yeah. Um, Content on Friday, check it out. It's called Devoured by the Mouth of Hell. It is by the band Harriet. It's a bloody heavy week, boys. It's a bloody <laughs> heavy week. Uh, it do be got, a heavy week. It do be heavy. Uh, we've got another UK band to talk about as well. They're called Swamp Coffin. They're a three piece sludge metal band from Rotherham. Uh, their new album's called Drowning Glory, and it's released on the 27th of September through APF Records. So I, I don't know masses about Swamp Coffin. I know that you're a fan, son, but I had a little read of the press notes that came with this record, and it really sounds like these guys have been put through the bloody ringer since their last album. Like, Right. Yeah, there was so the bassist attempted to take his own life, and then m- multiple family members all dying on the band, and it's kind of led to the band deciding that they're essentially cursed and so they opted to write the filthiest heavy heaviest most obnoxious record they possibly could in an attempt to like exercise demons and i'll tell you what it bloody worked didn't it this is Mate, this house that house is clean clean spotless on the day in front now, these days because damn this, i honestly didn't think this week the 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 least heavy album we talk about would be the Black Dahlia Murder. Like it's mad. Like, this <laughs> album, it's, it's imagine if 
imagine if Crowbar came from hell instead of New Orleans. This is essentially what we've got, right? <laughs> this is just, it's incredible. Like, it's just riff upon riff, and they just they just batter you like waves on a cliff face. And then before you know it, chunks of you start dropping in the ocean, man. Like, this is such, such a heavy record. <laughs> Dude, I'm in. I'm so in. This is I mean, probably it, you, it? you've got to suck pretty hard for me to not be like immediately clicking on a band called Swamp Coffin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty hard name. It's, hard it's name. a very, very hard name. I've got a lot of time for it. I also I had a look on their band camp and they do a t-shirt that says Swamp Coffin Bastard Club on the back of it, which is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Harder than fuck. That is so hard. I love it. This album is absolutely massive, mate. I am so bloody happy with it. Um, as heavy and fantastic as it is, I wasn't expecting it to be like quite as expansive as it is. Mm. Like considering it's so so dirty and brilliant, it's incredibly sort of expansive. Like it's sort of it's like June through the filter of Mastiff. At some points, is how I think about this <laughs> yeah. record, and I, I love it. Dude. I could see that for sure. There's definitely that element. Like, it's almost like post metal, but just run through 12 distortion pedals. Like, it's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely got that element to it. And it just, it, it has like a rhythmic, like, like a battering, you know, like when you see yeah. you know, like there will be blood and you see the oil field, with those like big sort of mechanical hammers that just kind of, and they're not hammers, but they're pumps, aren't they? But they kind of look like hammers just <laughs> like this. That's kind of like a visual representation for me of what this album makes me feel like. And it's so weird when you look at the track lengths and they're like eight minutes long. Long but you kind of like album. they could be 20 minutes long or they could be 45 seconds long you just kind of lose track of all concepts of time while you're listening to them you go into some sort of quantum realm it, it and really i love that like about that. it it really is like that like because i was about like i don't even know where i am in this album anymore like, yeah how long, like how long has it been on how long has it got to go what track am i on and like yeah it just it's kind of just relentless like yeah, it very just, much and, so. and, the, and the riff just keeps playing like again and again and again and like it is quite hypnotic yes like, to definitely to, uh, like i i i actually hypno sludge <laughs> hypno sludge i'll hail the hypno sludge but, like, <laughs> i think i actually personally speaking i think i probably need to give this one a bit more time i don't think it's a record i can just kind of like jam once or twice and be like uh like it's yeah, cool, I've got the but it of this. needs yeah, yeah, so much more time, and it also needs the right weather for me. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> well, we've been up in it though. We've definitely. Like, been, I mean, you live in uh, Scotland. Your weather's like that. All mate, the time. it's been sunny today. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, yeah. it was like right it was up, like <laughs> it was like simply the wrong day for me to listen to it, and I was just sitting here like, <laughs> could it not just rain? like now because it, honestly like see if i was walking home from work and i'd had a dog shit week and i was trudging home in the 45 minutes in the rain it would be great like the that, perfect that, record that, for that, that yeah, would basically what it's been like, designed for it's yeah. like what's been custom made for this album yeah. is like yeah for missing person, your bus <laughs> yeah that in, the rain. in that position in that situation and just like angry at the world and like yeah. i need some i need someone who understands why i'm so angry at the world right now i'm gonna yeah, put like this I, swamp coffin album on yeah for i sure. feel like i need to re-listen to it in that scenario <laughs> and then i'm gonna be like it was cool but like this is like way sicker like i think it just <laughs> needs the right the right listening environment i just love the visual of you like staying in the office and looking out and like no, I'm not going to walk home yet. It's too sunny. I'm going to wait for it to rain so I can listen to Swamp Coffin on the way home. <laughs> I'm, it's, it's, I'm still there 24 hours later. <laughs> Mate, I, I think this record like masterfully blends really cool, expansive grooves. There's like a vocal intensity. Yeah. It's dark. It's savage. It's menacing. It's, but it's not like driven by blind fury. It feels very sort of calculated and precise. Uh, it's absolutely a bit of me, this thing. Yeah, man. Some bands like run riffs into the ground because they don't have any other ideas, but it feels to me like Swamp Coffin are purposefully doing it in like an obnoxious way. And I love that about it. Like they're, It's like antagonistic in the way that they go about just battering you constantly. Yeah, like um, there's no reason for that riff to really repeat 
for the twentieth time, but it it did, and I enjoyed every single. Yeah, it. <laughs> it drives it home, doesn't it? It like, just drills yeah. it into your brain. Like I came away from this record just singing to myself, <laughs> "Heavy <laughs> dies the crown, <laughs> in glory we drown." Like, <laughs> yeah. there's Honestly, loads that, of really cool six in there. That, yeah, yeah. The, in that it, is the exact bit that I was like. I'm I'm enjoying this now. Like that, like the repeated like call. I was just like, oh, sick. Like, what? yeah, <laughs> they're, they, they're they're like doom anthems, man. It's somber <laughs> and immense at once, like a big black tidal wave. But you know, but I'm riding that tidal wave. I've got like a, a little lo- a low, maybe a massive joint and a pint of Guinness. <laughs> like, just oh, I was thinking, I was thinking more Point Break, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is this is utilizing like the heft and scale of of doom and sludge and like sort of sort of angling it more in a direct way like like what we see what we saw with ether coven right this is kind that, of yeah yeah hitting definitely. similar notes where it's massive and like it really you know gets stuck in your head but it's it's very direct at the same time it's it's a fucking absolute beast mate yeah dude it's Larry. I also really enjoyed um I mean they've got some great song titles, right? Hypocritical Mass, that's good. Know you're worthless, like that's really like they're, they're just <laughs> twisting these these sort of expressions, but chapter and hearse was a personal favourite. That's and a then, screamer. I that's, really yeah that's tracks really, really, really cool and I was looking. I had to look into where that sample came from. It's not something I've come across before. And I watched the scene from the movie. It's called Network. Um, uh, so everybody used to use that. Oh, uh, really? I was like, it's. It sounds a bit like the uh, the Charlie Chaplin Machine Minds and Machine Hearts that one. But it's... there's a Maybe She Will song that uses like the whole speech. Oh, okay. And I think, so you gotta get mad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's yeah. and there's another there's another speech from that kind of like it's not from the same film, but it's that kind of era. And I think like architects used it, and like a bunch of other people. And it's that kind of like it's very similar. And like to be honest, even a band does that. I'm like, oh, I'm all in. Like I yeah. love a, I it's love just a, a really goofy, cool moment, a goofy little, <laughs> goofy little voiceover. <laughs> I just thought it worked well. It's a it's a tried and true technique, like you say. Like maybe she will with sixty five days of static, basically do it instead of vocals entirely. Like it's a thing that works really well. But in that song, where it kind of helps give that like that menace on that that low kind of building sort of quiet you're, stalking you're just kind section. Of sitting there listening to it, like he's right, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, you gotta get mad yeah. <laughs> I am a human being like, I am yeah, mad, it really, it really I am mad. it's funny you should say that I am yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's talking to me yeah this, this is a really I'm glad that you you've put this on the schedule son because I think this is an absolutely perfect example of this kind of thing uh, he's, yeah. he's banging and I didn't until I was like looking and writing my notes didn't even realise they were from the UK that made me even happier yeah, I had which no is idea. so sick yeah <laughs> I mean you could only be that certain type of miserable if you come from the UK really, to be <laughs> fair <laughs> can't you we're about specifically in the UK though Rotherham right so like where's that it's Yorkshire kind of, it's kind of measurable yeah it's, it's, measurable. Pretty, it's pretty miserable <laughs> <laughs> I think we stayed yeah, there once. We stayed there once on tour, maybe. It rings a bell. I don't think I've otherwise ever been to it. <laughs> <laughs> sure frame reference for everything. You've got an holiday? More or less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went on holiday to Rotherham. <laughs> I went on holiday to Portsmouth. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, it came to sunny Portsmouth. I did, I did, and I didn't even see you guys. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We have to go to where do we go to Leeds to see to see each other? Yeah, yeah. I was baby. waiting for a baby to pop out though. That was that was yeah, that is true. Like, and then I and I was down for a wedding, so I get swept up in wedding being a be, being a best man. Oh, nice, nice. Plural. <laughs> There's no better best man. Um, yeah, this is an absolutely sick record. Called Drowning Glory is by the band Swamp Coffin. Check it out if the if it rains. Maybe if it's sunny, maybe put it off to the next day. <laughs> take it out. Do you know? Take it out in the nature, mate. Take it out there. Yeah, like get I out. If get I out having, in the forest. Yeah, if I was having a moody little forest walk, even if it was sunny, it would probably have probably have worked. But yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I mean, and my initial like kind of lesson, I was like, ah, oh, I don't really know like 
it's cool, but I don't know. And then, like, some point about halfway through, it just kind of, like, came together. And then, like, I really noticed how, like, pounding it was. And then, like, that thing with the speech, I was like, oh, this is, like, this is cool, actually. I'm sold. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sold. It's Absolutely massive. Sick. Let's, Absolutely like, sick. I'm stoked for them. Like, they they're a fantastic band i uh can't wait to see them live like that sort of stuff just big anthemic sort of doomy business is beautiful live i can't wait to absolutely certainly be watching them at atg in the next couple of years that's yeah, that's gonna that's gonna that's, that's, that's an absolute that. shoe in isn't it <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> that's exactly the sort of place that they need to be awesome right oh, what a bag of riffs boys like that's beautiful riffs Thanks a lot Absolutely. for coming, Ross. It's been it's been a treat as always to it's have you. Good. It's been long overdue, but it's been good. Yeah, man. Hell yeah, brother. We'll, we'll inevitably do it again sometime. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Next time that you actually, when these the, these singles you've been talking about come out, I'm sure we'll uh, I'm sure we'll reconvene. Yeah. Or at Christmas, maybe we'll. Uh... Maybe we do a, a mega Christmas special again. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Let's do go you know nuts. The, do it on YouTube the, now, so the you know, everyone's yeah. protected. Uh, the downbeat did a christmas special last year and i said to someone i was like the heaviest walked so the downbeat christmas special could run <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then Amazing. i think people just looked at me a bit funny and i was like oh, yeah. <laughs> clearly, clearly not high iq podcast listeners absolutely exactly they're, they're not they're not in the the mensa heaviest club are they <laughs> <laughs> right hey, we'll, uh, Absolute we'll see you next pleasure. week we've got some ridiculous ridiculous records to talk about next week it's such a brilliant time of year for the oh, riffs they so just keep time. coming so come back next week we'll be chatting about lovely riffs won't we see you later love you bye bye <laughs>